Welcome back to the Cuyahoe Hotel here in Cuyahoe Grounds, uh, Craig Alexander, two for 222. <laughs> yes, what a brilliant innings it was in the first session of the day. How do you feel? Good commentary, Richie. Uh, <laughs> I feel good. You know, I think um, it's been a long time coming this race from last year, so just looking forward to Saturday, really. Okay, and uh, at night time they tell me you keep your teeth in a jar beside the bed? Yeah. Or in rubbish binny. <laughs> He got left out by the selectors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just being idiots, okay? This is Iron Man Live, and, uh, well, look, you gotta, you got to just, you know, it's an icebreaker, right? you got to have fun here at the Iron Man because people tend to get a little bit too serious, don't they, Craig? They do. I mean, it's, uh, I guess the stakes are high, you know, it's a big pressure race, but I think it pays just to stay relaxed and stay calm. And I mean, the gun's going to go off on Saturday. There's nothing you can do about it now, so you may as well not worry about it. Okay, mate, you were a rookie last year and you got second in your first race. It was, you know, an incredible performance. Came out here, did your homework with Lisa Bentley, trained for over a month, you know, on the course and around the course and learnt everything from a, a wily old veteran in Lisa. Um, and, and now this year you come back, number two, wearing number two in the race and uh, a devastational 2.45 run last year was very, very good for a, for a second place. Now, what are you going to have to do to win this race? Um, you know, I think... It, it starts months before this week, you know, I think um, you have to prepare well, firstly, um, be in great physical shape, and I think I've done that. Um, you know, I've got to race week, and I, I'm feeling pretty relaxed because I feel the preparation's been as good as it could have been, you know, and it's, all, it's one thing to come and train here, but it's certainly another thing to race on the course. Uh, I think I learnt a lot about this race just by doing the race, you know, and um, they say ignorance is bliss, but they also say knowledge is power, so uh, I think... Certainly, I, I got a feel for the course, I got a feel for my competitors and, um, you know, there's things I took away from last year's race that I put into training and also my mental preparation, so I, I certainly feel like I'm ready for Saturday. Mate, where'd you dig up those cliches? You know me, Greg, I love all the sporting cliches, all cliches, really. <laughs> okay, won't get too serious. Let's I'm just actually, keep the ball rolling here, eh? Yeah, I'm just actually, I'm, I'm welling up at the moment, I just think I'm going to cry. The rolling stone gathers yeah. no moss. <laughs> Just keep the cliches coming, eh? <laughs> yes, this is uh, Craig Alexander joining me. Uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. He's throwing my train of thought off. But uh, anyway, um, now lining up for this race on Saturday, I mean, it's a good lineup, you know, fantastic. Um, the race last year is going to be a little bit different than this year's race, I believe, because, um, you know, Norman pulled out halfway through the race and Farris was out, you know, the day before. Uh, but this year it's different again because you have Benjamin Sanson and Andy Potts who are two very, very good swimmers, which I, I think that will, you know, be up the road pushing it. Um, yeah. So it's going to change the race a little bit. Well, certainly, I mean, even before we get to Benji and Andy, I think if you look, I mean, at last year's race, had you asked me who I thought would have gotten the top 10, certainly Norman and Farris. I would have had Luke Bell up there as well, Cameron Brown and, and Ruka Beaky. So... Uh, unfortunately for them last year, some were sick, some were injured. Um, so the field was fairly decimated before the gun even went off. And I mean, Norman didn't, didn't even get halfway into the race. He got to sort of 25 miles on the bike. But um, it'll be a different race. I think, I know it's such an arduous event and, and the build-up's long and tough. You always get people injured, illness, whatever. So I'm sure it'll be the same this year. But um, those guys will all be back, keen on, you know, redeeming themselves and you know, overturning the disappointment of last year. As you mentioned, Andy and Benji, who are both great swimmers, they're both almost Olympic level swimmers mm. before they, they turn their hand to triathlon and you know, they've got a, basically a 20 year background in endurance training and sports, so they're certainly going to add something to the mix. Uh, I don't think you can ever look past Norman too, I think he's got such a great record at this race, I mean, particularly with Ironman racing, you can look at what people do here, there in April and, and whatever and what times get done in Europe, but I don't think it has any relevance to what's going to happen here in October, you know, it's it's like tennis, you know, you can beat your Uncle Barney in table tennis out in the backyard, but when you get to Wimbledon, you're going to have Federer and Nadal and, and Djokovic, and that's the same here, you know. You know Farris and Norman, this is their, their big thing for the year, and, and most of the guys, so it's going to be a competitive race, no doubt, on, on Sunday. Okay, Saturday. and yeah, Saturday, you, you turn up on Sunday, you're done. <laughs> you're right, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> We'll be partying and you'll be out uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, crying somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then finally, uh, uniform on the race day. You're going with the white, the off-white, the antique white, the cream, I'm gonna go beige. With, I'm going to go with the beige or the camel this year, or maybe the bone, or the ivory, we'll see. Okay, mate, well, you have a good day out there in your, in your raw whites, and don't forget to wear your tidy whiteies as well.